Ah, the sea temple, the last structure for me to transform. And this is what we're going to transform it into. This weird looking futuristic space glass dome thing. And it looks pretty cool. So let's get straight into it. With the power of building, I shall part the sea so that we can see what we're going to build today. And I want to sort of draw your attention to just how empty the ocean is because this was actually filmed in 1.12 with a bit of resource pack magic so that I could use the time lapse mod. Later on we're going to stick it in the 1.13 update so you can see what it looks like with all of the new stuff added. So let's just have a look at this. This temple is very very odd looking. It looks almost pyramid like with a few pillars and I don't want to lose this overall shape. So what I thought the first thing I was going to do is take the arches that are at the front entrance and accentuate them, bring them all the way down to the floor so that we have these really big arches and then we can sort of segment them up into many and they will go all the way back to the main body of the temple and later on we can fill them in so that they're properly attached. But because these arches were already here, they're perfectly spaced and aligned and it doesn't look too out of place. Don't get me wrong, we will be shaving back plenty of this build and replacing it in certain ways. I've used grey stained glass for this particular build because I don't want to take away from the fact that this is already a very turquoise and blue build and I want to just be able to see into the ocean from the inside. The idea behind this so far is to make it as airy as possible. So on the inside, it's like one giant greenhouse. So as you can see, everything's equally spaced and we've got all of our arches complete with some glass filled in. And there we have our entrance, a slight upgrade from the weird looking arches we had before. And there's even a little stone brick pathway out of the front. So the next thing that we're gonna do is then start working on one side in particular. The bottom bit where the pillars are, I actually opted to change these to walls. Now the reason I did that is because I want to be able to use the inside of the temple in its entirety. I want to be able to create a big interior. And if there's pillars there, the water's just going to flood in. So I decided to change that to walls to make this more of a solid structure. And I did this by adding some dark prismarine and some interlaced pillars of prismarine. Pretty much everything is made out of glass or prismarine in this or dark prismarine. So while I'm doing this side of the temple, Pelescent Moon, who is helping me out on today's time lapse, is doing exactly the same on the other side to save a bit of time. So now what we're going to do is actually shave away a lot of this build. And the sea temple is actually really, really full of thousands of blocks and I mean that so we just shave that off because we want to keep the shape but not that shape we want to make our own thing and we mainly want to include a lot of glass so the main thing that we wanted to do is add two very distinct domes either side of the temple's arms and adding one big dome would make it look a bit strange so we added a smaller sphere in the middle and then around it you can see that we gently sort of edged out the shape to the extremities of the sea temple and that's to kind of give it this futuristic vibe and you also notice that we added this pillar in the center of it with a little light on the top. Lighting is going to be a big problem. We had a lot of time trying to figure out how we were going to add these little panels in because in this particular sea temple the pillars were very tall and we're just going to replicate exactly what we did over on the right hand side to the left hand side making sure we've got it as symmetrical as possible even one block out on this particular build may look extremely weird and noticeable which is not what we want so again hand making a dome if you've got your hands on weld edit you can just do the sphere command in a matter of seconds so there we have it two symmetrical domes and then a lovely entrance at the front in the middle so that kind of takes care of the front of the sea temple and that actually looks really decent but again the point of this build was to add loads of glass so that you can really see everything out in the new 1.13 update and all the kelp etc at the moment there's not a lot to look at so you can't really blame the sea temple for being full of prismarine. So a big part of this was just shaving away the thousands of prismarine blocks and then replicating the very rough 
shape and size of what was there before, but including glass. So one of the key things that we did was added lots of curves. So we wanted to connect up these domes, so we sort of shaved off one of the back bits of it, and then created another segmented section using the arches, and then those three gaps, the same as the entrance, just on a slightly smaller scale. And we're gonna replicate those arches several times along for the majority of the sea temple itself. Now, the reason we're using normal prismarine bricks is because it's a slightly better version than normal prismarine. Now, prismarine is fine, but as you can see, it is animated. And in a time lapse, it's kind of distracting to see it. So there's nothing wrong with the prismarine, but it is an animated block, which does make it a little bit odd to look at sometimes, even if it does change very, very slowly. So as you can see, we've got this repeated pattern, and this time, instead of the glass just hitting the bottom, it actually goes smooth all the way to the extremities of the sea temple, much like we did by the dome. Now, this was the toughest part of the time lapse. This is where the bulk of the sea temple is, and actually, it's like a maze in there, it really is. So even though we were able in creative to just bash everything away, it was actually quite a lot of blocks. So what we decided to do was, again, replicate the style and the shape roughly where we were, but keeping in mind that we've got these repeated patterns and glass in between them. Again, like I said, this was based off of Kew Gardens, which is a giant greenhouse, and that's definitely what we're going to go for here. So we're adding more and more arches as we go along, and as you can see, the never-ending task of removing the blocks on the inside continues, and it will continue for a very long time. They're a great source of materials if you want these blocks, but if you want a time-lapse, it just gets in the way. So we're kind of going for that futuristic 60s vibe where there's a lot of curved glass involved, and it's going well. But the problem is, if we did that absolutely everywhere, the build would look incredibly flimsy, especially as for something underwater. We've got a lot of these curved pillars, and we want to kind of keep that rigid structure that makes it look like it actually can hold its own weight. And if we added all of this glass on the back, the same we have the side, then it might look a bit odd, so we had to come up with something different, and this was the hardest part of the build to try and visualise. And what I opted for was adding a smooth back, kind of like the outside of the domes where it sort of gets gradually smaller and smaller, just on a bigger scale. So it's a giant ceiling that's going to slowly expand as it goes out to the pillars. And we're even gonna do something different once we get there. I want a sort of wide viewing platform. So what we're gonna to need to do is remove the pillars to a certain height and then basically reshape everything. This part of the sea temple is remade, we're not keeping much of the shape on here, mainly because it is a giant square pillar and we are just cutting around the corner, but it is the same size overall, so you can kind of get the idea of where we're going with this. The main thing here, plenty of glass, but this time horizontally rather than for the ceiling. Most of the build so far, the glass has been above the user or the builder or whatever, but this time at the back of the building, this is going to be something that you can just stand and look straight and see out into the ocean. Because being honest with you, if you look up inside the sea temple, you're just going to see the sky and a little bit of water, maybe a guardian or two. Which is why you can see that we're planting this sand, almost flower bed, around the outside so that when you do look out of this glass from the inside you can immediately see some coral we are going to plant that ourselves of course but it is just like a flower bed but underwater we're going to really utilize the new 1.13 update however we can't do that until we get into the 1.13 update we've had to build this obviously in 1.12 but that's not the point. We can do the exterior here just fine. Now, of course, I love TNT, so I couldn't resist just trying to blow it up. It didn't really make a dent. I got so fed up with trying to take out all of the blocks by hand, just bashing them away, that I just resorted to TNT and I just made a mess. So I, I actually went back to just taking them out by hand. <laughs> what we're going to do for the top of this is again, a glass feature. We want the top of it to be totally see-through. One, to let in some natural light, and two, to make this temple feel really enormous from the inside. And the taller that it is, 
the more we can fit in, like trees and stuff. I've already mentioned that I really want to make this feel like a natural greenhouse in a way. I know that it is a temple transformation, but there's no need to actually make it a temple afterwards. It can be something really nice like a greenhouse. So for the most part, it's about cleaning up this inside. It is a labyrinth and it means just removing it and then replacing it with those glass panels at the top and we actually curve them round. Now at this point, we'd been building for about three hours and it was getting pretty late. So we actually decided to just copy what we did on one side and paste it on the other. Seeing as it is entirely symmetrical, it honestly doesn't make much difference. So as long as you make sure every single block is the same, on the right hand side to the left hand side then it is going to be just fine and there we have it we can see in a matter of seconds the entire build is complete and I will be honest with you you may be thinking that this looks weird this build looks strange and that's because there's no water and there's no interior the outside of this building does look strange it doesn't have a style it doesn't really fit any known building style that i know anyway it is a very odd looking alien building and that's great because the sea temple is an odd looking alien looking building with blocks that don't even exist in real life prismarine does not exist in real life so i tried to sort of hone that in when we designed this particular temple and I'm really pleased with how it came out especially as it took such a long time for us to make this so I'd love to hear what you have to say but we actually need to go into 1.13 to see what this looks like with the sea around it and by the power of building I will put the water back on top of the sea temple which is a laggier process than it might seem <laughs> But as you can see in 1.12, there's loads of little air pockets and stuff. And you can see how empty the ocean is. I think we clearly forget just how empty it used to be. The Sea Temple just was on its own before. And it does look strange. So let's go and have a look at what it looks like when this is all replicated over in 1.13. So this is the final version. The differences between this one, it's pretty similar, there might be a few blocks here or there that are different, but this one is very close to the ground. The other one had massive pillars, but this one doesn't. So we kind of just left that as it was blank. And the other thing is, we actually had to empty this out manually and add some barrier blocks to stop the water encroaching on the temple. So as you can see, it looks exactly the same from the outside. The exterior is almost identical. But as you can see, the interior has had some work done to it. So I'm going to give you a little tour of the inside on what you know might happen with it this entire build was actually inspired by q gardens a victorian greenhouse so with that in mind it's not really a temple anymore as a giant underground greenhouse and i think that's brilliant so what we've done is we've filled the space with a big tree and plenty of greenery so there's like pergolas up here with vines growing all over them there's floating flower pots which you can do in this update which is great you just grab yourself a flower pot and it will float wherever so that's brilliant and what we actually did was put a fish tank in here but instead of fish spawning there's a lot of guardians and when i say a lot of guardians there's like 50 guardians in here there's a lot and then there's an elder guardian on top of that and every now and again you just get spooked as it goes boo and like the big face comes in front of you, but it, it's fine you're fine in here they can't they can't hurt you and we even added a couple of other little ones here like these tiny ones and these get full of elder guardians as well oh, sorry normal guardians as well so that's interesting i'm pretty sure once the water is added in which we're going to do in a second there will be even more just floating around the whole concept of this build is to have it surrounded by water so that you can enjoy the ocean basically that's why this sea temple transformation was left so long so that you can enjoy the ocean under here we've got more little aquariums with a couple of turtles in and we've added some mushrooms some trees the idea is that it is a big enjoyable greenhouse for you to explore big open areas plenty of plants but the main thing is there's just glass everywhere so you can see what's going on oh boy you okay fella <laughs> So yeah, as I said, there's a lot of guardians that spawn and these are just sort of like the aquarium tanks. If we want to go and have a look outside, that's what you see, a big kelp forest. 
So that's pretty much the inside. There's nothing too spectacular about it. It's just about utilizing this space. On the inside, we sort of decorated the inside with nice arches. But you could do something completely different with the space that you're given in here. If you want to be able to see clearly out and see the water absolutely everywhere, then probably the tree is not the way to go. But I thought that the greenhouse effect, because it was so inspired by Kew Gardens, I just thought it would fit nicely. And we got a little donkey in here that he, d he doesn't know where he is. So yeah, that's pretty much the interior of this one. It's fairly simple, but it has to feel at home. We've sort of made the similar shape as the water temple and we, well, excavated all of the inside out of it. And you can see that there's ponds either side of the entrance. So we haven't detracted from the fact that this is a sea build. This is an ocean monument. That is the main thing. And from the outside, all there is to do now is add back the water. I was extremely worried about the transformation of this one because when we were building it, I couldn't help but notice it looked incredibly weird. Incredibly weird. And I kept saying to myself, don't worry, it will look better when the water's in. Of course, I didn't know that until this very point. The water is now in, and I must admit, once it's covered in sea pickles so that it's lit up, it looks actually really, really cool. What I failed to notice or sort of anticipate would be the the huge amount of danger involved with having all of these guardians around. They <laughs> they are just plastered all over my pickle layered sea temple. Unbelievable. Well, actually, it's t totally believable because that's where they spawn. And they do actually protect you, not that you need much protecting, but actually getting into the sea temple, you might want to make a different entrance to this one. I did notice that you can sort of go in like this and close the trap doors behind you and they won't bother you. Um, but that's not the point because you want to be able to swim outwards quite easily, I imagine. So that is basically it. And I am really happy with how this has come out. With all of the lights put in, the sea pickles you can even light it up more by adding more sea pickles but just adding one seems to be enough it looks strange when it's really covered in pickles all of the sea guardians are just chilling on it which is actually really cool so from the inside you can get a really good view around the back here on the sand added loads of coral fans and it is like a proper garden it's like a proper greenhouse it is really, really cool. With all of those splash of colors added, it makes this incredibly blue and green build look a little bit cleaner. So as you can see, the Guardians will just destroy everything nearby, which technically speaking isn't too bad because it means you get a lot of free ink sacks, but they do attack you as well. And I'm not really sure that there's a solution to the Guardian problem, to be honest with you, but I must say, this is one of the most unique transformations that I've ever made, and it's actually one of the last. There's only a few more that I am able to do. The underwater village that the drowned lived in, or live in, and the shipwrecks. But the shipwrecks actually look pretty good, so I'm not sure where to go from that. Anyway, thank you very much for watching. From the inside, you can see that this place is absolutely wonderful. That's the reason why there's so much glass here is so that you can enjoy the view of all of the water and look, all of the coral and the seagrass, the kelp, the works. And actually, once the water is around the sea temple, the only fella that's left in here is the giant elder guardian because only one of those spawns. So if you actually remove all of the water and you put in a big enough fish tank, this guy will spawn. But once you put the water elsewhere, all of the guardians will spawn elsewhere except this guy. So you've got an elder guardian fish tank. That was an accidental thing that I've done and it was actually pretty cool in the end. So yeah, this has been an excellent transformation. I would love to hear your thoughts and feelings on this one. It is a bit different and I will admit it is a very strange, it doesn't match any theme. It's not like I've actually made a house out of the, the sea temple or anything like that. It is a giant futuristic big blue underground underwater greenhouse thing. And I think that's really cool. It doesn't match any style, but the main thing is that it matches the size and shape of the original design. And that's what matters to me in these transformations. It doesn't matter what you transform it into, 
but it should really resemble what it was before, but it should just look better. And I think I've done that, and I think it's actually a really cool build. So, thank you so much for watching, everyone. I really hope you enjoyed this video, and goodbye.